Hey, Earthling Zombies Cat here. Today Caddy wants to talk about a super rich family. House of Gucci. Yes, that's right, Gucci is a luxury brand that everyone knows. The story begins with Guccio Gucci, the father of Gucci. He opened his first bag store in Florence. He has a great career, but he also has a big family. He has six children. After Guccio's death, his eldest son Aldo Gucci and his youngest son Rodolfo Gucci each hold 50% shares. And that's when the struggle for the super rich family started. Aldo, who studied economics, has been helping companies since he was 20. He knows everything about the luxury market. The opposite of Rodolfo. He returns home after Guccio's death. Before that, he had been an actor in more than 40 movies. He doesn't know the business well but he takes over the financial management of Gucci as soon as he returns. This is because his brother, Aldo, has reputational risk. He often embezzles public money. To keep Aldo in line, the company's money is managed by the honest Rodolfo and the business continues to be run by Aldo. It's the perfect match for Gucci. But humans are greedy. Soon, Aldo is dissatisfied with the situation. He feels he's not being rewarded for his hard work. He wanted to take back the financial control. Rodolfo wouldn't budge. Because they each owned 50% shares. Neither one of them could convince the other. Aldo, in anger, made a decision. This decision in a fit of pique caused the internal struggle within Gucci to worsen. He split his 10% share equally between his three sons. So that he can get them all to work at Gucci. He had a numerical advantage over Rodolfo's one son. But Aldo hadn't imagined that his second most talented son, Paolo, would betray him. With his outstanding ability, Paolo soon became the VP chief designer of Gucci. But because of his uncle Rodolfo's control, he was limited in what he could do. All the designs he wanted to create were rejected by his uncle. In anger, Paolo changed all his designs. When Rodolfo found out, they had a big fight and even threw bags at each other. This is a terrible behavior among designers. It means that they both despise each other's works. After that, Paolo started secretly planning his new brand, Paolo Gucci. At first, he hit it very well, because he needed to utilize his VP status to transfer Gucci's customers. But soon the affair is exposed. And this time it doesn't only enrage Rodolfo but also his father, Aldo. Aldo beat him in anger. He fired Paolo and prevented Gucci's partners from working with him. This means that Paolo's brand is over before it even begins. And that's why he hated his cruel father. He could have lived a rich life with 3% of the shares, without doing anything. But he has dreams and wants to build his own business. So he waited for the chance to return to Gucci. A few years later Rodolfo died and his inheritance passed to his son Maurizio. Aldo found a loophole and filed court claims against Maurizio for failing to pay high inheritance taxes and forging Rodolfo's signature, pretending that the large inheritance had been left before his death. Although the court ultimately acquitted Maurizio for lack of evidence. But Mauricio's hatred for Aldo was buried. Paolo seized the opportunity to cooperate with Maurizio. They found evidence of Aldo's embezzlement. Paolo sent his 81 father to prison. He thought Maurizio would allow him back into Gucci as promised, but Maurizio reneged. After this incident, Paolo no longer had any hope for the Gucci family. He sold his shares to an investment company called InvestCorp. Nobody knows why. Maurizio also sold part of his share to InvestCorp. After Aldo's release from prison, he feels that he is no longer alive. He also sells his shares to InvestCorp. Just as Aldo sold his shares, something happened. Maurizio is appointed CEO of Gucci. Because he invited InvestCorp to help him. He sold his shares to create the illusion that Gucci was going down, so that InvestCorp could absorb the Aldo family's shares, in exchange for the chairmanship of Gucci. Just as Maurizio was about to embark on his great endeavor. Fortune did not favor him. The Gulf War broke out the year after he became CEO. The economic bubble burst and the rich stopped buying luxuries. Maurizio was unable to recover from the onslaught of history. In 1993, he sold all his shares to InvestCorp. Since then, there have been no more members of the Gucci family in the Gucci. But that is only the beginning of the rich family struggle. Because Mauricio's wife, Patricia, is the highlight of the drama. She came from a poor family, her father is a truck driver and her mother is a laundress. But her mother told Patricia from her childhood to marry a rich man. Then her mother showed Patricia how to marry a rich man. Patricia became an aristocrat in one night. Seeing her mother's success made her even more certain that she wanted to marry someone richer than her stepfather. When she was 22, she met Maurizio. Unlike other girls, she didn't make a pass at Maurizio but kept herself aloof and haughty. Because she didn't know him, didn't know he is rich. Maurizio didn't drive the day they met. And her natural arrogance fascinated Maurizio. He pursued Patricia. 
when she found out who Maurizio is. The pace of their marriage accelerated. After the wedding, Maurizio realized that Patricia was a gold digger. She didn't hide her true nature, spending money like crazy and showing up in front of all the media. She says she is Patricia Gucci. Maurizio couldn't tolerate her flamboyance and their marriage was in trouble. They didn't officially divorce, but they lived apart for 10 years. Until Maurizio found a new woman and Patricia asked him for a divorce. She wants half the property, but Maurizio is no fool. But to end the marriage he is willing to pay Patricia half a million dollars a year. That's a lot. But for Patricia, it's just her weekly allowance. Unable to reach an agreement, they asked the court for a ruling. Finally, in 1994, the court ruled that Maurizio should pay one, $47 million a year in alimony. Their marriage ended. But their conflict escalated instead. Shortly after her divorce, Patricia found out she has a brain tumor. When she heard media reports that her ex-husband is about to remarry, she became furious. Because once Maurizio married, her two children would no longer be the sole heirs to the inheritance. To hold on to the inheritance that is hers. Patricia found an assassin who shot Maurizio. The assassin was arrested and confessed to her. That's how she became known as the Black Widow of Gucci. She tried to get out of the case by claiming that she had a brain tumor that affected her sanity, but it didn't work and she was sentenced to 29 years. While in prison, Patricia behaved well and was granted parole. But she never goes out because parole requires her to get a job. This is worse than prison for Patricia, who has never worked before. In the end, she only served 18 years. After her release, she does everything the same as when she was young. She dresses up in extravagant costumes and walks around with her macaw. Her two children, who are Mauricio's direct descendants, still receive $1, $2 million a year from the Gucci family. After her release from prison, she even told the media that the $300,000 she spent on hiring an assassin was well worth it. After her divorce, she still called herself Gucci and even tried to return to the Gucci family but was rejected. How a crazy woman. And that is the end of the Gucci family feud.